We had an adventure and cargo ship filled trip from Florida, now approaching Isla Mujeres. About 20 miles out from the island, the wind was picking up and the strong current was pushing against us. So we slowed down more and more. If we went to Titan weather, we would have stopped at the, at the tip of Cuba. We like really like had to time it, like we were going to be in here like yeah. with hours to spare. I can see the ship building up behind us. Really windy tonight. We had to arrive in the harbor before 6 p.m., so we turned on the engine with full sail up to try and make it in ASAP. After three or so days at sea without pooping, the poop tube pooch was pooped. <laughs> we were relieved to be close to a familiar harbor for the upcoming bad weather. Like surfing the waves that we're about to hit us, they're coming down and going under our boat, they're going, and then going around and doing it again and again and again, like the like game for them. The sea became less lumpy as we approached the shelter of the island, although the wind was becoming more strong. We decided to head straight towards the inner lagoon, where boats can temporarily anchor during particularly bad weather. We arrived with two hours to spare. that we were not the only ones seeking shelter within the inner lagoon. Robbie jumped in the dinghy and went to check on the depth close to the mangrove. We would have just enough to sidle in close, but we would have to hurry before someone else came and scooped up the spot. We arrived in Mexico just in time with a storm chasing us into the harbor. As soon as we got internet up and running, we realized that we've got a hurricane on the way. We're watching, we're keeping a close eye on the hurricane situation because we're in Hurricane Alley, as I like to call it. We had a couple of years ago a bunch of hurricanes coming up this way and other boats are starting to prepare themselves as well. Trying to grab a very coveted spot face up in the mangrove from the direction where we expect the wind to be coming. We had to check in in the middle of doing that. <laughs> when the office opened on Monday, to check in, which was an adventure in itself. There's a new process. You, maybe you've seen the video from a couple of months back where uh, it kind of delineated how you check in and check out of Mexico here at Isla Mujeres. Well, now they've added one extra part of the process just to make more money and just to uh, make things more difficult for cruisers. You now have to get a certification of fumigation of your boat. So we had the customs agent come out to the boat yesterday and we had the fumigator come out to the boat yesterday. We were tied up in the mangrove, face first into the mangrove. We got a little bit of comments from the port captain's office about that. But the law here in Mexico is that we can prepare ourselves for an incoming hurricane. Robbie declared that we have Choco on board. We had the vet come out and, and come see Choco. There's a lot of waiting to be done. And now we're all good with our paperwork. Welcome to Mexico, Hurricane Alley. <laughs> we decided to tie up next to a previous casualty of bad weather. So chances that we'd have a larger vessel next to us would be diminished. Next step would be to tie to as many large mangrove trees as possible. Hi. Hi. Keep the 
Utopia. Slowly but surely, more boats came to join us in the mangroves. Soon, we had neighbors on both sides. And more boats were squeezing in wherever they could. Slow, slow, slow. I mean, nice and slow. Have to take a run at it because I hit the ground. We organized with our neighbors to try and space out as much as possible. But ultimately, we knew that Mother Nature would decide how things would go down here. At this point, I think we already saw some of those photos of boats piling up at Karaku. There were going to be a lot of boats coming into Isla Mujeres Lagoon, and nothing would stop a pileup if the winds and water levels were high enough. We deployed our stern anchor and kept tying lines. All kinds of other boats were in the lagoon now. Plenty of charter catamarans, small ferries, and even sargassum catching machines. Many boats stayed at their regular marina docks, and some boats looked as though they'd already seen a hurricane here, once or twice. There was still space up against these mangroves all the way up into the lagoon. However, it's pretty shallow here for many boats. We were as ready as we were possibly going to be, but every time we found another rope in the bilge, Robbie tied that one off to the mangrove tree too. Tying more ropes? Less than 24 hours out, Hurricane Barrel, which had already devastated Karakou and crashed into Jamaica, was wobbling in its forecast and still possibly changing course as it approached the Yucatan Peninsula. The worst of it was likely to hit Cozumel Island and Playa del Carmen area. Hurricanes often tend to go more north than predicted, so although the forecast called for no more than 50 knots here up at Isla Mujeres, we tried to prepare for worse than that. Either way, the real-time radar images showed a barrel was coming. Tony's sailboat had too much draft to find a good spot inside the lagoon, and his smaller sailboat had no engine, so we helped to move it closer to the outer anchorage mangrove. Is it slippery? No, it's actually quite So I'm just gonna be letting it out? Yes. I was surprised to see a fair amount of charter cats anchored outside here also. But not surprised to see the giant pirate boats from Cancun seeking a little more shelter. Tying ropes all day, tying knots, tying lots. When we had finally tied the last line, Robbie decided that he wanted to catch us a nice dinner in the beautiful sunshine to celebrate a bit before the storm. Uh, Accidental casualty. It was at this very last moment that the drone gimbal decided to crap out on us while I was trying to get a shot of all the boats in their final positions before the storm. And then a catamaran showed up to tie itself shittily on top of us at the very last moment. They just did this right now. Like, this is the time to do this, hey?
think it was a storm surge or a tide that's really, the water got really high. That's called the storm surge. I hope it doesn't look too high because it would like pop up from the mangroves. <laughs> Uh, he just tied off his wind generator. The catamaran decided to tie some more lines, even as the storm had almost finished. Yeah, because he just he just went forward to detach himself from their anchor, our neighbor's anchor. But they're just going to go right back into position on top of his anchor. So I'm not sure what the f*** they're trying to do. We were all very lucky that the hurricane did not hit us here with more force. The worst damage in the anchorage really did seem only to be a couple of torn flags. But it was a long and wet night without much rest. Tea time, hi Ken. The phone has no credit on it, right? No, it has a bit of credit on it. It's just that it's not, Telcel's not working right now, but our uh, little internet stick is working. So, another tropical excitement for the year. Hopefully this is the only one we encounter before we head more south. It looks like everyone in the lagoon, most of the people on the coastline here, got away without much damage. The island was flooding a little bit, the usual power lines, uh, phone lines, uh, gas station tops <laughs> being toppled a little bit but we didn't hear about anybody getting hurt or anything like that. Now there's a mass ex exodus of boats leaving Isla Mujeres where they took refuge and we're gonna get ourselves out of the mangrove as well. Randy just backed out of here. Didn't run over our back anchors too much. Stay still. There was a shallow hump right behind the boat. A little nudge from a dinghy was required to get unstuck. Now it was our turn to back out. Okay. We needed to untie the lines and to unkedge our forward anchor from the forest floor. Yeah, if you can, a bit. Until I clear Victor. And as we backed out, we needed the help of our other neighbor to make sure that our bow didn't swing onto Victor's boat. <laughs> okay, so we're attached by this back anchor. Are we in reverse or in forward? No, we're in neutral. And then although we thought the next step would be simple, to pull on our stern anchor road until we were completely free, it ended up being a little more complicated. We walked the length of what we had already brought on board to the bow, and then Robbie managed to unkedge it from there. We're moving! We're sludging through the muck. The boat had much more control in forward gear. Because I don't know where this one ends. This one ends right here. Okay. What? Now back outside in the normal anchorage, we had not relaxed more than several hours before another blow came through and caused some boats to drag. Tony advised us about the wind vane. He said that it's normal for this Aries to seize down at the lowest bearing after sitting for several months. So we got to removing its bottom. Yeah, so this was originally very hard. It was seized and then now it's basically seized again. I mean, it's not as seized, but I have to put a lot of pressure with my fingers to spin it, which is exactly not the thing we want. Completely loose how it's supposed to be. Well, how does it grow? This metal? No, the metal is, is the is highest it, quality stainless steel. It's the, or is it the, tef it's the teflon bearings are expand. The bit of that, a bit of sandpaper, the scissors. Everything else on the whole wind vane is a lot more shaky than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this to be shaky as well. Well, we know it's going to tighten over time. What did you spray in there? Oh, everything that we had. <laughs> 
You sprayed a little WD-40, a and little the, silicone yeah, I'm just spray. For now, the wind vane was moving freely again. We just had to reassemble it without losing any small pieces into the water. We were preparing to leave this relatively hurricane-prone place, which involved cleaning the bottom, of course, and we discovered a hole in the fiberglass of our keel, and making a run to the fuel dock. Some of our fenders popped up and we scratched our paint. Uh, we spent money we didn't have on, a, on an old, pretty shitty dinghy, but it's uh, saleable. It's a sailing dinghy. It's one of my favorite sailing dinghies for that size. And we're gonna have to completely rebuild it, but uh, basically part of mold. We're gonna have to patch it up, add fiberglass, rebuild all the wood trimming, paint. Just throw it onto the pile of projects that we have to do. We needed to make sure that no screws or sharp pieces were sticking out to puncture our main inflatable dinghy. The two would be sharing the deck all the way down to Guatemala. Preparing for our sail to Puerto Aventuras and then Guatemala. We're bringing the kayak over to Tony in Puerto Aventuras. And we just bought ourselves our own new dinghy. Three dinghies on the deck. It's not so pretty. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little crowded, but it fits. Well, we put the little one up here, tie down, put ours normally, and then put Tony's kind of over. Tony says he's gonna try and fix the kayak. Where I failed, he has a heat gun. This morning we are motor sailing from Isla Mujeres to Puerto Aventuras. We checked out, and the checkout was just as the same as always, just as long as always. We we're in the office until about 2.30 in the afternoon, even though we had all the photocopies ready, but you gotta wait. We're not sure for what, but you gotta wait. We got ourselves ready for some fishing this morning. Robbie's already got fish in the ice box. Motor sailing, uh, just cause we wanna get into Puerto before dark because of the entrance, the small entrance there. Even though we know it well, we know the coastline well, and we know the entrance well, we still want to arrive before it gets dark. We made the entrance just before evening. And it seemed much more shallow than we remembered. Then we got to the dock to unload some of our dinghy cargo. Our gearbox is giving us more and more trouble each day, and we came in a little hot. And then very quickly, much too quickly it seems now, we cast off with the help of our dear friend, Carrie. 